of why people come. I'm so depressed. <laughs> but, despite of that, what happened? I just lost my. Hello? Okay. Can you turn this up a little? I need some reinforcement. <laughs>
Drink up. <laughs> uh, a native of Chicken Mass and a veteran of the armed forces. He walks with a limp. <laughs> and he's a fucking reporter, he's pretty hip too, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and uses a cane, the result of accidents in the service and afterwards. You know, I wonder if that thing's still working. <laughs> Maybe that's got something to do with all this. He lives on a disability pension. So, well, he's got an income, girls. Uh, he is a Catholic, but he doesn't go to mass much. He never takes drugs. Even prescription medicine makes him sick. So he, the fucking guy is fucked up. You know, he enjoys an occasional beer, and he smokes cigarettes and drinks coffee. My only wife, she said, it keeps me calm. <laughs> left it is, not that, it, it, not that there isn't a lot of content there now. Uh, he says he is not a preacher, though he has tried to help people by directing them to the drop-in center where he once worked. I try to help people out, he said. I tell the girls, girls, not women, see what I mean about him with the age thing? Uh, don't go with these guys. They just get them in bed and then they drop them like a piece of meat. Uh, the walls of his modest two-room apartment, I, this is the fucking part I like the best. That should be in the art kind of sort of right here. The walls of the, I would like to show these guys work. The walls of his modest two-room apartment are decorated with his own artwork. Mostly, they are pictures of pigs. <laughs> <laughs> this is unbearable. Uh, uh, pigs, 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 pigs. Oh. They're decorated with his, well, now, mostly they are pictures of pigs. Saying things like, <laughs> drop your penis. <laughs> we don't like clean people. <laughs> this is a fucking Vermont. A Brattleboro reformer. It's a liberal state. I'm telling you, this is a little right there. I mean, this fucking guy would be good on Saturday night. <laughs> They interview him every Saturday night. It'd be awesome. Can I ask a question? Oh, sure. Where'd you get this paper? I was in Vermont on a commune oh, okay. uh, last week. I'm right. oh, just curious. Picking uh, fucking mushrooms. <laughs> I can imagine. I was out there for a day. I can see how you might get like this after a while. No, it's beautiful. I was in the Whoa, where are you going? Want a discount? Are they fig convincing, figuring that night? Yeah. Are they underage? We'll let them drink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is terrible. Um, well, up until the pick part, I was going to say there's so much work on you, but that really went over the line. Well, it, he, he's, he's having trouble. I mean, he's not. Drop your pants and go like clean people. The apartment is furnished with old furniture and wooden plastic. <laughs> There is a single bed uh, on the bedroom mirror. There is a poster with another picture of a pig with a hat that says, USA. <laughs> he is a gracious host, offering his visitors coffee, asking if he may smoke. He says he hopes the newspaper article will be better advertising than his photo <laughs> sign that announces his wishes, honest and true, as a wife for life. So, um, Maybe he should have a sign. Is he going to relocate? I guess. You could probably. Well, he's going to go home. What do you want to relocate? You could write the paper. I assume it's the one I get charged with. But he wants to put a piece of wood in the window. But he should put a pig in the window, say, which would be my wife. He's already been offered the opportunity in the neighborhood. The, the, the pimps in the neighborhood are already willing to try to straighten the guy out. But uh, he hasn't been very willing. So anyway, that's what's going on in Vermont. I was up there, and that's what's going on in Vermont. All right, we're going to get this thing started. We have about, we have uh, the Burton Time Show. We've got a little piece for you, and then there's going to be uh, Zen Psychotic that's going to do some stuff for you, and uh, Wrong Hero is going to do something for you, Just Victor. Then we're going to take a little break. Everybody's going to buy himself a pitcher of beer. And uh, then we're going to come out with Jim Nolan and his trio, and that's going to be awesome. So stick around and we're going to do our best to enjoy ourselves.
going to be our OJ thing. Right. I mean, you're all ready for like a nice like, picture. You know, we're going to have to sit in nice and warm by the fire with a little OJ Simpson. Stuff. So it's jury time, so we got a little, uh, what kind of people you might, they might find. In California. In California. <laughs> right. Again, yeah. All right. And the questions are coming up, so we're going to start our questioning first. Tell the court your name. Huh? Your name. Huh? What? Your name. Could you tell the court no. your name, please? <laughs> no. Your name. Could you tell the court your name, please? Please? <laughs> your name. What is your name, sir? My name? Your name. Oh, my, my, my name. Henry Van Drizzle. Okay, Mr. Van Drizzle, what we're going to do is uh, we're gonna ask you a few questions. What? Let me finish, please. Uh, no, 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 not finish, not finish. Van Drizzle's Dutch. I'm Dutch. <laughs> Dutch. Okay, Dutch. Mr. Van Drizzle, uh, that's good to know. Down here? No, 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 Where's no. that? You no, you're Mr. Van Drizzle. Huh? You, 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 you. Mr. Van Drizzle, please. That's in Phoenix. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Mr. Van Drizzle, could you just tell us what you do for a living? Huh? What do you do for a living? A job. Loving? What do you do? Living. A job. Employment. Living. Living a job. For, what, how do you make money, Mr. Van Drizzle? Money. Money. What do you do for a job? Money. I'm a cab driver. <laughs> okay. You're a cab driver. Great. So, um, you drive a taxi. Huh? You drive a taxi. Mr. What? You drive a taxi. A cab. A cab? I got one! <laughs> yeah, I got a cab. A fleet of cabs? What? Huh? You, you have a fleet of cabs? I got a cab. I got a cab. Van Drizzle's Jimmy Service. So you have a fleet of cabs. Okay. I got one. I got one cab. I drive it. So you drive a cab for a living, huh? Mr. Van Drizzle. You drive a cab for a living. All right, when you're driving a cab, huh? you have what? customers. Drive. Customers? <laughs> huh? Clients, people that you drive from here to there, Mr. Van. I, I got I... You have customers, clients, people that you pay for you to drive in your cab. From here to there. From here to there? In your cab. A rider? People. A rider. A rider. I got a rider. A rider. Okay. I, got, I got a rider. Okay, so you drive. I've always had a rider. And you have you have a cab and a rider? I got a rider. Okay. Now, when you're driving your rider uh -huh. from here to there, what? Your client, your customer, your rider, you drive them from in your cab from here to there, correct? From here to there? That's correct. From wherever you pick them up to wherever you drop them. It's off. hard. Mr. Van Drizzle, when you're in the cab with your rider, you must have conversations. Huh? Like maybe on current events, newspapers, what's happening huh? day to day, what? newspaper, on the radio, TV. Where? You must have Where are you going? Conversations. Huh? Conversations with your rider, correct. You converse? Converse. Converse? Converse. With your customer. Ah. About current events. Ah! Correct. Conversation. Conversation. It's all
That's all right. The amp is not bad. You let it sit long enough, it turns into wine. All right, next. Uh, Francis the Meadow, the wrong hero. Americans subscribe. 
subscribe to is that the customer is always right. Three words. Stick them up. <laughs> Americans believe that the early work of great artists shows signs of their later genius. So in other words, Picasso's phlegm, Monet's toe clippings, and Jackson Pollock's vomit are worth a fucking fortune on the open market! <laughs> well, maybe Jackson Pollock's vomit. Yeah. Me. You saw that coming, didn't you? <laughs> All right. Americans believe that pop songs are infallible fonts of wisdom. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what life really was until I heard Boogie, boogie, boogie <laughs> on the way down here. I ordered my whole system of philosophy around the insights contained in the lyrics to the song Rico Suave. <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, the teacher taught me a song which I tried to apply to the lessons which I encountered in my adult life. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Which is now why I'm selling crack for a housing project. Because I took these words to heart. Nobody ever died from hard work. Roll your boat down the stream. Nobody ever got anywhere rowing their boat down the stream. You gotta roll your boat up the stream, up towards the light, the light, like salmon at the spawning grounds. Go towards the light, the light, and you won't get there yourself maybe someday if you're fortunate and you do everything you're supposed to do. Maybe your kids will have a chance to see the light, the light, the light. Too loud, okay. I'll quiet down a little bit. <laughs> Because I'm very sensitive to your wants. <laughs> Americans believe that every lottery winner stays at their job no matter how much they win. Yeah, I can see this little scenario. Don't you know, you know, I'm a dishwasher, I'm a dishwasher, I'm up to my elbows in fill. But I, I won a million dollars in the lottery, but I'm going to be a dishwasher because in 18 years I'm ready for a big fat pension. Yeah, that's me. Hey, they're having steak tonight. You know, the boss lets me take little pieces of steak off the plates and, and, and save them for my dog. <laughs> and they're having asparagus spears. Maybe I'll get some of them half chewed stocks. For my dog. <laughs> Many Americans believe that somehow Disneyland and Disney World are magical places. What are you so excited for, Junior? I'm going to Disneyland! I'm going to Disneyland! Well, what are you going to do there? I'm going to meet Goofy. I wonder what wisdom the great man will have for me when I arrive. <laughs> Americans believe that poor people have bad teeth and talk too loud. Now what's the joke that goes with this? I'll let you be 
the comedians. A, well, there sure as hell ain't any here on earth. Okay, that's sort of a, a wicker of applause. Or B, sort of gives a whole new meaning to the phrase, coming home to Jesus now. <laughs> that one, I'm going to go with that one. Thank you very much for helping me make this difficult decision. You know, you can send a coconut through the mail without any further wrapping, and the post office is duty-bound to accept it. <laughs> but, provided you have the correct address, Simba, care of the Monkey House, Bronx Zoo, New York. And don't forget that zip plus four. You'll get there that much quicker. Zimbo will be scraping his knuckles along the ground for joy when he gets his little present from yours truly. Oh, and, and don't forget the stamp. If you, if you mail a fourth class book rate, it'll get there in three weeks, but it'll only cost you about $1.50. That's a handy hint for you all. Now, are any of you familiar with the famous singing star, Chubby Checker? Yes. Yeah. Hey, who the fuck doesn't know Chubby? I'm gonna kick your ass! You say anything bad about him? Yeah. Well, you know how he got his name? Uh, he was on the prestigious Cameo Parkway label out of Philadelphia. And um, the music publisher's wife, said, say, that Fats Domino sure is popular. What should we call our new singing star? We'll call him Johnny Checker. But what if she thought for a few more minutes? He might have been called something like arteriosclerotic backgammon. <laughs> or obese chess. Or oleogenous bingo. <laughs> Bert, what is your least favorite popular singing star? I don't know any popular singing stars, Francis. Manny? My least favorite? So, did I know or did you know or? You've heard of with Michael Bolton. <laughs> we'll really drive the Bolton Bolton! Yeah, I like that. You ever notice that once you get past a certain age, when people call you sir, what they're really saying is fatso. <laughs> Remember this when you hear Lulu singing to Sir with love. <laughs> Too fat, so with love. Do, 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 do. Any application of the word sir is always made more entertaining when you mentally replace it with fat, so. <laughs> fat, so, yes, fat, so. Yes, fat, so, no, fat, so. Where do I go, fat, so? What do I do, fat, so? What do I say? I know a very handy phrase when I'm at work and people make impossible demands on me. And it's one that you might put to use yourselves if you're running a small business or behind a service desk or some other menial job which barely pays the minimum wage and doesn't have any benefits. <laughs> um, and that phrase will save you a lot of heartache and a great deal of stress and you won't have to have that high colonic that the good doctor was talking about. <laughs> What part of no don't you understand? The N? The O? Or the little period under the exclamation point? <laughs> but like I said, I don't like to get stressed out. I had a job writing children's books, but I got fired for 
using the word poop. <laughs> and they wouldn't publish my masterpiece, Winnie the Shit. <laughs> I had a job as an assistant for Bill Keen, the guy who does the family circus, and one day I turned in a comic strip for him. It was, um, Mommy, I threw Jesus down the toilet. <laughs> so I got fired from that job, too. <laughs> then I had a job in the theater. My job was to take classic plays of the American theater and make them relevant to a more contemporary audience, but they didn't like what I did to the streetcar named Desire. I didn't change any of the text, I just changed the title. I changed streetcar named Desire to fucking trolley sluts. <laughs> Triple X. <laughs> Must be 40. <laughs> I lost my faith in science. I used to have a subscription to Scientific American, but now I subscribe to Superstitious Caveman. <laughs> I got the latest issue, dated 4 billion BC. Uh, on the headline in the front says, uh, Fire! Bad! <laughs> what to do about those nasty knuckle scrapes? And Sacrificing your son to appease the angry gods. Some do's and don'ts. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't, don't say, crossies, crossies. <laughs> I sort of look at myself like Prometheus, the man who stole fire from the heavens and was punished by the gods. But you know, I got to thinking. Why didn't Prometheus steal the fire from hell? <laughs> they wouldn't have missed it. They had plenty to go around. Just a question. That's all. Now, there's this magazine called Final Frontier, and they have a contest to um, rename the moon. OK, well, moon is not good enough for these highfalutin types. I guess they want something more scientific. One suggestion was exit one. I don't know. I think we should call it something like Giant Ovary! <laughs> Shoot rockets! Or maybe we could call it Capitalism. Because it's big, it's white, it sits there and does nothing. <laughs> scientists got to name them. And of course, they named them after their own filthy kind. Why can't sports fans get a hand in there and name, name some of the craters on the moon? I have a suggestion. The next crater that comes open and needs a name, call it Bucky Dent. <laughs> or Mookie Wilson, or Boog Powell, or maybe the Sea of the White Bronco. I don't know. I'm just throwing these out as suggestions. Well, while we're at it, as long as we're renaming the moon, why don't we rename the sun? I mean, what's the name it has now? Sol? Sol? It sounds like some Jewish guy on Miami Beach eating lots and getting a sunburn, you know? Like, ironic, Sol about skin cancer from Sol. No. I think we should name the sun Socialism. It's big, it's red, it's setting all over the world, and it burns everybody equally. <laughs> I'd like to uh, conclude with one more thing. I, I'd like to go into business and uh, open up a line of heartless shelters. It's where heartless people would go to hide from the homeless. <laughs> but then I realized they already have these things. They're called suburbs! <laughs> Thank you all very much.
so that it's just Victor. Revelation of the Apocalypse 
as it's all called, describes it well, where is that fucking thing? <laughs> it speaks of the churches as a harlot, and it says the woman was a name, purple and scarlet, and was adorned with gold, precious stone and pearls, and had in her hand a golden cup that was full of disgusting things, and the unclean things of her fornication. Recognize it? <laughs> That's the church. You
said that he was taken away, transformed into pure energy while meditating on the retreat. While meditating under that same tree, we got a Shiva. We got a Shiva, she came to me. And she said, Me too. You know the better. You have perfected yogi, all the asanas. You are needed far, far away. Across the ocean. So many of your townspeople have gone away and they have become nasty car drivers, beggars with bad attitudes, and pompous doctors. Go to New York. Go to New York. You are very much needed. So I went to New York. And I tried, I tried very hard to show people, to bring them back to purification of their minds and their bodies, to happiness, to beauty, back to the five virtues, to find virtuousness in their life. And not only to the people of my village, of course, but to all of the people of New York and Americans in general. I am so fucking sick and tired. <laughs> It is just, it is not working. And I looked around, and what did I see? I saw people that had no desire for purification, no desire at all for goodness, no desire at all for perfection of themselves, no concept of nirvana. And I practiced my entire life. And then I thought to myself, I've never experienced this is evil. Evils of pride, anger, greed, passion, infatuation, and malice. And I continue to think to myself, I cannot truly be a one man. Because of course, although I have practiced all these years for virtue, I know nothing of evil. I am going now for evil. <laughs> Which is why I have prepared for myself and for all of you, my former students, the Karakta Saman, the Bhagavad Gita. You see, Karakta Saman, Bhagavad Gita. I wrote it, of course, in Hindi because my language was in Bahari, I think, not as many of you would know. What shall we find in here? <laughs> Again, I explained to Ay Ayurvedic medicine and Ayurvedic thought everything must be balanced. <laughs> Twinkies are not balanced. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> of course, there are two sacred animals in my country, of course. The cow, because it is the mother and the milk can be used also to feed a child. And the rat, because that is the companion of plating of Ganesh. You know, the elephant cow. And I'll tell you that today. <laughs> and now I'm going to ingest some beef. <laughs> Very happy state. Mmm. Mmm. What else do we have in here? I had stolen some things earlier, just for the fun of stealing. I didn't, I, I don't know where they are. It's really, they are getting out of posture now. <laughs> But I'm going to do Pastrika using the wrong nostrils. See? So that's what breathing just for the fuckery. Now look what I have. 
is in a common piece called German. That's a piece we usually use for my uh, There you go. Uh, we have Nick, Nick Russo on guitar.
Tour. Right. And uh, the last time we played at the AS220, I was with the Jazz Passengers uh, at the old place. Yep. Uh, and uh, although it's very small, it's probably my smallest size <laughs> so far, but we've been very timid. I really appreciate that. But it's the nicest place. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot nicer, nicer place than most.
side of Isaiah. Well, does it, anybody recognize that piece? Okay, that's really butchering it. It was called uh, Beautiful Love. It's a picture.
down because all I hear is you and these guys. I'd rather hear me.